Deep in a cave in the forests of North Spain are the remains of a gruesome massacre. The first clues came to light when explorers came across a pair of human jawbones in the cave. Then scientists determined the remains were of Neanderthals, who were killed and cannibalized about 48,400 years ago. Today, El Sidran Cave is one of the most important sites on Earth for learning about Neanderthals. Scientists have found 1,800 Neanderthal bone fragments in the cave, some of which have yielded snippets of DNA. This meant they were kept in a condition unlike almost any other Neanderthal remains, and proved a perfect snapshot of a single, deadly clash, possible between two local groups. The tools found at the site of the slaughter came from a few kilometers away, suggesting their fellow attackers were probably also their neighbors. Evidence indicates the victims were members of an extended family, eaten by cannibals. It had always been assumed that the cannibals were other Neanderthals, but evidence of modern humans in the region at this time now calls that assumption into question. Anthropologist John Hawke said, I think this is a pretty significant piece of research, and it really adds to the forensic understanding of what happened in that cave. I don't see any real reason to question the scenario, but like most cases of archaeological finds, there are always questions as to the fidelity of the evidence. That being said, my inclination would be to revisit some other Neanderthal sites, keeping in mind the relatively strong evidence of cannibalism and systematic warfare at El Sidron. I think there are other pieces that can be put together into a stronger case across many sites, that is I don't think this was a single incident without parallels elsewhere. Unlike the earliest anatomically modern humans, who coped with periods of food shortage by joining forces in large, efficient groups, Neanderthals tended to gather in small family groups of around 10 to 12 people. When times were tough in winter, this meant they had to resort to extreme measures. The study shows the cannibals butchered their rivals, breaking open their skulls and bones to extract the marrow. It must have been a big feast, and the bone pile likely washed through a sinkhole from a rocky shelter above, eventually settling in the small alcove of the cave system where they were found. Scientists think they were killed in winter when food was short. There is no evidence of any fire, so they were eaten raw immediately and every bit of meat was consumed. They even cut around the mandibles of the jaw to extract the tongues. What's more, the only other thing scientists have found are fragments of stone blades. And when the scientists closely examined the Neanderthal bones, they found cut marks and signs that the blades had been used to slice muscle from bone. The long bones had been snapped open. From these clues, the scientists concluded that the Neanderthals were victims of cannibalism. Scientists have found evidence of cannibalism among Neanderthals at other sites, but El Sidran is exceptional for the scale of evidence. Their end was a bloody one. They all show signs of cannibalism. They have cut marks on many bones including skulls and mandibles. There are many different markings in many different bones in all individuals, including cut marks to disarticulate bones and remove muscle insertions, and snapping and fracturing of long bones to extract the marrow. Evidence exists that they were dropped into the cave in a single event, via a collapse of nearby fissures above the site, or a violent storm or other natural disaster likely caused the cave to collapse and bury their remains at the site. Direct radiocarbon dates on the bone fragments, obtained a date of 48,400 years ago, plus or minus 3,200 years. This is during the early part of the geological stage called Marine Isotope 3 a period which is known to have experienced rapid climate fluctuations. Sea levels were about 90 meters, 300 feet, lower than today, and the climate was colder by 5 degrees Celsius. We've often thought that the arrival of modern humans in Europe led to the pretty rapid demise of Neanderthals, but this finding demonstrates there is even more complexity for the arrival of modern humans in Europe than previously known. The cave is 8 miles or 12 kilometers from the northern coast of Spain, and 150 kilometers or 85 miles west of El Castillo Cave, where modern human teeth dating to 42,000 years ago have been found. What's more, an ancient baby tooth found in a cave in southeastern France shows modern humans arrived in Western Europe almost 10,000 years earlier than previously thought. The tooth, 
along with several tools found nearby, are an estimated 54,000 years old. Archaeological evidence from Australia shows that modern humans reached that continent by as early as 75,000 years ago. Of course, they would have needed boats to cross the open ocean to get there. It therefore isn't a stretch to assume that modern humans in the Mediterranean had access to boats 49,000 years ago, used them to explore along the coastlines of this sea and beyond, and that they could have explored up the Iberian coast to northern Spain. We can only speculate, but maybe being unfamiliar with the local plants and animals, they were starving and attacked the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals' campfire on the hill would have been visible from the beach, where the freezing, starving modern humans landed. Maybe they did not intend to murder the family, maybe there was an interspecies confrontation that led to the attack. We will probably never know. Neanderthals mostly disappeared from the fossil record around 40,000 years ago, after a demographic history of small and isolated groups with high but variable levels of inbreeding, and episodes of interbreeding with other Paleolithic hominids. It is reasonable to expect that high levels of inbreeding could be expressed in the skeleton of at least some Neanderthal groups. The individuals identified at El Sidron include seven adults, including three males and four females, three adolescents between 12 and 15 years of age, including two males and one female, a boy aged seven years, another child aged around five and one infant. Dental investigations suggest that the seven adults were all fairly young at the time of their deaths. Once the scientists knew who they were dealing with, they looked for DNA in the bones. The cold, damp darkness of El Sidron has made it an excellent storehouse for ancient DNA. In two of the individual scientists found a gene variant that may have given them red hair. Analysis of mitochondrial DNA supports the hypothesis that the individuals represent a family group. All three men had the same mitochondrial DNA, which could mean they were brothers, cousins or uncles. The women, however, all came from different lineages. Neanderthals lived in small bands of close relatives. When two bands met, they sometimes exchanged women. The younger child and the infant share mitochondrial DNA with one of the adult females, and thus they were likely her children. So, the men were all closely related, but the women were from outside the group. That suggests this Neanderthal family practiced a patrilocal residence pattern. Altogether, 17 congenital anomalies were observed, with at least four individuals presenting congenital conditions. The Neanderthals from El Sidron, with genetic and skeletal evidence of inbreeding, could be representative of the beginning of the demographic collapse of this hominin. It may even be possible to draw a detailed genealogy of the El Sidron Neanderthals. The bones of the Neanderthals also indicate that during their entire lives they suffered from nutritional stress with a diet made up mostly of plants, seeds, nuts, and tubers, and some lesser quantity of meat. These data together lead researchers to believe this family was a victim of survival cannibalism by another group, who may also have been suffering from nutritional stress. The remains of the seven-year-old boy are described by researchers as sturdy, having weighed 26 kilograms or 57 pounds at his time of death, and standing just over one meter or three and a half feet tall. His brain was about 87.5% the size of that of an average adult Neanderthal. By the same age, a modern human boy should have a brain that's 95% the size of an adult. Anthropologists also found that the Neanderthals living at El Sidron were treating dental infections and stomach bugs with poplar plants, containing painkillers and antibiotics. The researchers also found one of the adult male Neanderthals had DNA from the western balsam poplar in his teeth. The ailing Iberian Neanderthal was found with an abscess in his jawbone and bacteria that would have given him a nasty stomach ache. To treat himself, DNA shows he ate poplar, the bark of which contained salicylic acid, the pain-killing ingredient of aspirin. Apparently, these Neanderthals possessed a good knowledge of medicinal plants and their various anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties, and seemed to be self-medicating. Indeed, Artifacts found in El Sidron show that these Neanderthals were at least as equally technologically proficient in stone tools as modern humans at the time. Remarkably, they used a compound found in rocks, called manganese dioxide, today commonly found in batteries, 
to light their campfires 50,000 years ago. The skeletal remains reveal that these Neanderthals possess a different bone structure than Neanderthals found elsewhere in Europe. Neanderthals fell into at least two basic ethnic groups, that coincided with their north-south geographical distribution. Southern Neanderthals from the Iberian Peninsula, the Balkans, the Middle East and Italy had broader and shorter faces than northern Neanderthals living north of the Pyrenees, the Alps and Central and Eastern Europe. Archaeologists theorize there are two possible reasons why humans would have dined on their dead. One is that they needed to eat whatever was at hand, including human flesh, because ecological conditions for their survivorship, such as extreme cold weather and no meat from hunting, were really difficult. The other possibility is that this was done in the context of something we may think of as symbolic. Neanderthals are thought to have subsisted primarily on meat. Those from El Sidran Cave on the other hand showed no evidence for meat consumption, but appeared instead to have a largely vegetarian diet, comprising pine nuts, moss, mushrooms and tree bark, showing quite different lifestyles between the groups. However, this group of Neanderthals, although malnourished, were not starving, so why would another Neanderthal group be starving to the point of being forced into cannibalism? This find is, is probably the first of many that we're going to get a lot more information about this interaction time of the last Neanderthals and the first modern humans, and it will come from more fossil discoveries, and also, particularly important, getting DNA evidence from some of these uh, rather fragmentary fossils. Scientists hope to get a better idea of who their killers were. The stone blades found at the site may provide a clue because they were made from rocks located just a few miles away from the cave. So the victims might have wandered into the territory of another band of humans, or they were killed using their own blades and tools. 20% of the stone tools at El Sidron can be refitted to two or three cores. That suggests that the tools were made at the occupation site where the Neanderthals were killed. Indeed, over 400 lithic artifacts have been recovered from the site at El Sidron. All were made from local sources, mostly chert, silex, and quartzite. Side scrapers, a hand axe, and several levalloy points are among the stone tools. These artifacts represent a Mousterian assemblage, and could have been the murder weapons. The Mousterian, or Mode 3, is an archaeological industry of stone tools, associated primarily with the Neanderthals. The European Mousterian existed roughly from 160,000 to 40,000 years ago. Some Mousterian assemblages include exceptionally small points prepared using the Levalloy technique, causing some researchers to suggest that these flakes take advantage of greater grip strength possessed by Neanderthals. However, in North Africa and the Middle East, Mousterian tools were also produced by anatomically modern humans. In the Eastern Mediterranean, for example, Mousterian tools produced by Neanderthals are indistinguishable from those made by early modern humans. Mousterian artifacts have also been found in Libya and other sites in northwest Africa. Indeed, Mousterian tools have been found in a large cave located on the Mediterranean coast in northeastern Libya. The first and earliest layers of the site had flake and blade artifacts, which date back to 80 to 65,000 years ago. The second phase of the site contained Levalloy Mousterian flints, with current dating techniques suggesting these finds are dated from 73,000 to 43,000 years ago. This site could represent the jumping off point for early modern humans heading to Spain and France, who would replace the Neanderthals in Western Europe, eventually becoming the Cro Magnons. The evidence is mounting that early modern humans and Neanderthals may have clashed violently during their brief coexistence in Europe and modern humans may have eaten their Neanderthal opponents and taken their teeth as trophies. What's more, French anthropologists conducted a new analysis of a jawbone found in a cave in southwest France. They say that the jawbone belonged to a Neanderthal, and that it shows cut marks similar to those found on reindeer that were butchered by early humans. The scientists believe that the jawbone was cut, in the process of removing flesh and the tongue, a technique also used on the deer that early humans frequently fed on, and this proves that Neanderthals were fair game for human consumption. Indeed, evidence shows Neanderthals met a violent end at our hands, and in some cases we ate them. For years, 
People have tried to hide away from the evidence of cannibalism, but I think we have to accept it took place. The idea will provoke considerable opposition from scientists who believe Neanderthals disappeared for reasons that did not involve conflict. Some researchers believe Neanderthals may have failed to compete effectively with Homo sapiens for resources, or were more susceptible to the impact of climate change. But others believe our interactions were violent and terminal for the Neanderthals. The discoveries in Spain and France provide compelling support for that argument. The jawbone provides crucial evidence that humans attacked Neanderthals, and sometimes killed them, bringing back their bodies to caves to eat, or to use their skulls and teeth as trophies. Sadly, this would parallel what happened when Europeans invaded Australia and the Americas in recent times. Professor Chris Stringer, of the Natural History Museum of London said, This is a very important investigation, we do need more evidence. But this could indicate modern humans and Neanderthals were living in the same area of Europe at the same time, that they were interacting, and that some of these interactions may have been hostile. This does not prove we systematically eradicated the Neanderthals or that we regularly ate their flesh. But it does add to the evidence that competition from modern humans probably contributed to Neanderthal extinction. This theory is likely to provoke intense argument from other researchers, who believe that humans and Neanderthals had little interaction. Neanderthals managed to survive many ice ages before dying out around 40,000 years ago, around the same time as human beings arrived on the continent from Africa. One theory for the Neanderthals' disappearance is that they couldn't compete with humans, who had better brains and more sophisticated tools. But the mystery remains. What, exactly? happened to the Neanderthals for them to go extinct so suddenly, 